Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time joining my channel, thank you. If you are a previous subscriber or you are visiting from a previous video on my channel, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I have had a video request and this is something that I have wanted to actually do for a while and I have not done it. Um, I got a request from a subscriber. Her name is Frances. And first, I I'd like to thank you, Frances, for suggesting this video. I really appreciate that you took the time to do that. And I also want to thank all my new subscribers. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for taking the time to hit that subscribe button and for having faith in me um, to teach you things on my channel. Okay, so today what we're gonna do, Francis has requested me um, to make a video on how to do fonts on the FAF Creative 4.0 machine. And she specifically asked me how on the Creative 4.0. And it is something that I've wanted to learn because I do want to make key fobs with people's names on them. And I've always procrastinated because I thought doing fonts might be um, difficult. And I did practice a little bit. And you can see that here. And I had started to do my email. And I thought I would make a little, um, maybe like a little mug rug that's got my email on it so I can have it in my videos so you guys can see what my email is if you would want to ask questions that way. Or um, uh, knock on wood, someday a um, somebody would like to collaborate with me on a video or anything like that. They'll have my email and they can do that. So, okay. So what we're gonna do is you will be going to your embroidery edit and I have that screen up here. And Francis asked me, how do you do the fonts? And also how do you save a font uh, or save it to another location, I believe. Let me double check that what her exact request was. Um, okay, so she has asked, okay. Wondering if you could film how to use the screen on the 4.0 to create embroidery words and how to save them. Okay. So there are actually two different ways how you can save them. And once we get the design into the machine, uh, I will show you that part. So we are in our embroidery edit screen. And I know this bottom bar is a little bit hard to see. Um, even if I put the, whoops, I'm sorry about that. Even if I put the camera like right on the screen and lined it up just right, it still would be hard to see this bar a little bit because um, being that this is an older machine, the screen isn't really backlit to what modern screens are. Um, they just call this an HD screen and the new screens are LCD screens. So it does kind of make a, a big difference, but I do have it here in my little quick reference card and so this is what that looks like here. You've got your sewing and embroidery toggle. This takes you to sewing mode and embroidery mode. You'll also hit this button um, if you're done embroidering and you wanna remove your embroidery unit, you will hit that and it will calibrate the embroidery arm to storage mode so you can uh, remove the embroidery unit. Okay. And then this is your embroidery toggle icon. You got your stitching, um, your sequence, um, 
excuse me, your stitch sequencing and your embroidery text editor, which is this one. Then you have your stitch creator. Your stitch creator is going to let you make your own stitches, design your own stitches. And then you have your selection screen, your settings menu, your info menu, and your quick help. And what we'll be using today is our embroidery toggle, our sequencing for the stitches and the embroidery text editor, and our selection menu. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to hit our selection menu, which is the little, the bars, and it is taking me, it already has taken me to my fonts, and I, let me show you that. Okay, so right here. Um, it's going to have your stitches. It's going to have your font, your design, and your files and folders, and your quick help icon. Sorry if I'm a little out of focus there, out of uh, screen there. Okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to select our font. And I, in my experience, I had found that the, this is supposed to be, they say that this is a half inch. And I was trying to do the um, one eighth inch or the, I'm sorry, the 0.8 inch. And I'm going to try to do that again. So we're going to go with our 0.8 and I am using, let me go back, go back again. I am going to use um, the graphite. That's what this font was. This is the graphite font. And I thought that would be really easy and clear to read when I'm doing my videos. I thought I'm gonna try to make a little mug rug that will have my embroidery, or I'm sorry, my my email address on it for my YouTube channel. That way, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, they can email me if they didn't want to leave a comment down below. Um, I know sometimes some people um, don't want to leave a comment in the comment section. Um, some people um, may feel a little insecure about leaving a comment down there. And they can email me if they want. Hopefully, knock on wood, someday maybe if somebody wants to uh, collaborate with me or something, they can have that there. Okay. I don't know if I mentioned that. Okay. So I'm going to do the graphite. And um, the 12 is 0.5 inch. You can see that 12 there. The 20 is 0.8 inches and the 30 is one and a half inches. So I'm going to do the 20. Okay. And through my experience, um, I am going to use a 120 by 120 frame. And when I tried to use it earlier, when I did a practice piece, it kept on telling me um, um, it didn't fit into the frame. So I went up to another frame only to find that I was making a mistake in when I created my email. Um, I had put some spaces in it and I, there were too many spaces. If you hit the space bar, it's gonna put a line. So you don't wanna do that. That was my, my little error. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my email. So it's J S, I wanna, and it's in lower case. A and N D back to uppercase C and then I have 18 and so you can say J S N D C 18 so what happened was is it I didn't hit the A so I can I missed that letter so what you can do is if you see your little arrows down here you're going to hit that arrow until you get that cursor. You can see the little cursor right there to the spot you need it. Let's go back to lowercase, my A. Okay, so now you can see I have J-S-A-N-D-C.18. So I'm gonna move my cursor back to the end. 
Okay, and that's what I want on my first line. In my first experience, I learned that I could not fit my whole email on one line. So I'm going to have to split it up into two different lines. Okay, so I'm going to hit the... I forgot what that was called. <laughs> um, it is called the... sequencing and embroidery text editor button and you can see that it took me back to the embroidery edit screen so now what I want to do is I want to rotate it so I'm going to hit my rotate button and I want to rotate it so it's straight up and down and that'll be 270 degrees then I want to move it up a little bit. So I'm gonna move it up, drag it up, like so. Then what I, I want to go add more. So you can see that I have the, it's outlined. So I'm going to touch the blank screen. And then I'm gonna go back to the text sequence button. Okay, that's not the button I wanted to hit. I'd want to go back to the font where I want to select the font again. So I'm going to select it. Okay, and now I want to put in my next line. So it's going to, I need the at symbol, lowercase, gmail, m-a-i-l, Okay, and I'm going to see if I can fit the whole thing, C-O-M, at gmail.com. And I'm going to go back. Okay, and I want to rotate. Okay, I want to move it up just a little bit. about right there okay so I'm happy with that I'm happy with the way that looks so my email jsnc18 at gmail.com so it's Jennifer Jennifer sewing and creativity 18 at gmail.com okay so now what I'm gonna do is I want to go to my back to my Um, embroidery screen I don't want to edit anything else so I'm done and um, I think what I want to do actually is change my hoop size to 120 to 120 and you can see that it is going to be too large okay because you can see the outline here for the frame so it's obviously out of frame. So if I were to hit embroidery, you can see design outside hoop area. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel that. What I wanna then do is I want to go back to my text editor sequencing screen. No, I don't, okay. So let's close that. What I first wanna do is I want to hit so I highlight it, then go back to text editor. And what you can do now is I can change the style of the font and the size of the font. If you see this little button here, you hit that. And I know that I used my middle font size, which was the 0 0.8. I'm gonna go down one size and we'll go back. And now you can see that it's in the frame, okay? So now I wanna do the same thing to the next one. So, and then I'm gonna go back to the text e editor and I want to select that size as well. And then close it. 
and you can see it's back in frame size. Now I'm going to again have to adjust a little bit. So I am going to actually highlight this one and I want it moved down just a little. So I think that looks good right there. And I think that positioning of that one looks pretty good. Um, we can move this one just a hair. So let's say right there. I think that looks good. So now I'm going to try to hit my... Okay, so now it's telling me that I, it's okay, I can attach my hoop, so I'm gonna attach my hoop. Okay, and let me make sure my, I'm going to adjust the camera a little here, and you see where it says attach the hoop, so I'm just gonna okay that. And I didn't change my thread color. Um, if I was to go in, and edit my thread color. Each letter is a th is a color, and I'm going to be embroidering all mine in in white thread. I am using a really pretty kind of like um, um, I don't know what you ca ca call the the thread the fabric design. Maybe like a water spotted maybe. Um, teal color and I thought white would show up really well on that. So I'm not going to go in and change every single letter because every single letter I would have to change to white. Since it's all one color anyway, um, you don't have to do that unless what you wanted to do is do every single letter a separate color. Just to remind you, you could go in and set each color that you wanted. So I'm not going to do that. Um, okay. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna tilt the camera here a little bit and move that over. And I'm going to hit my embroider so you can see that it adjusted. I'm going to check my speed. I have it set at mid speed. And from my previous try, I know that the speed went well with this one. Oh, and by the way, I am using a paper tearaway stabilizer in the hoop. And then I floated my, I am using a cutaway, a mid-weight cutaway stabilizer. Um, the first piece of fabric I had was an iron-on stabilizer from a previous project I was using. And it was just a solid turquoise color, um, but what I did is I just spray basted the cutaway adhesive and the fabric right on top of each other. So I'm going to hit my, I'm going to hold my thread tail. I have my thread snips and my jump stitches selected so it will cut those automatically. Um, give me just a moment, I'm going to shut my shades, I'll be right back. Okay, so I am holding my thread tail. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And I really like that speed that it's at. It's at mid speed. Each letter is going to take approximately one minute. Okay, so it finished the first one. I'm gonna hit, so put this up a little. I'm gonna hit my start button for the next letter. And I'm gonna stop that just a second because I don't want this little thread tail that is, there was just a little piece there. So I'm gonna hold that with some tweezers and just kind of clip it. I do not want it kind of sewn into the... Okay, there we go.
So that letter, again, hit my start for the next one. For each letter you start, you're going to have to hit your start button. Um, I am not sure if on the Creative 4.0, you um, if there's another way for it just to continue going. Um, each letter is considered a design, so um, you have to sit hit the start each time once the previous letter is completed. If there is a way to have it continuously stitched through that, if you guys have any hints for that, um, please tell me. Okay, and our next letter. Okay, and you can see that, hopefully you can see that okay. Um, I'm going to let this continue stitching out so we don't have a gigantic long 30, 30 minute long video of just the stitching. So when it's completed stitching, I will come back and I will show you the next step. Okay, so the first line of text has completed. We are going to start on the second line. It has moved itself down to the starting position. This is actually stitching out really quickly. Okay, so I'm going to hit start for the next letter again. going to continue on and when this portion's finished I will be back again and show you our next step. Okay so we have all of our stitching completed. I am going to remove or let me put the make sure our foot's up. I'm going to remove it from the I don't like this little I have a um dynamic spring foot on here and sometimes it's hard to get the edge of the frame up underneath of it because it does kind of flex a little and so it it sometimes it catches on it when you take it out okay so here is our finished piece hope you guys can see that okay you can see that I do need to trim some of the little thread pieces which is fine and so we have our, our email on there I really like the way it turned out. This is my first time stitching fonts. Um, I'm gonna look a little bit closer here. Um, I think everything looks okay. Um, yeah, it looks, to me it looks really good. I think maybe the only thing that I could probably use on a satin stitch kind of font like this is maybe um, another layer of the tearaway 
or the cutaway stabilizer, either one. I did two layers because um, I have heard other people on my um, on other videos and on um, my embroidery sites I follow on um, Facebook saying that two layers of stabilizer is preferred when you're doing a satin stitch kind of design. It just needs a little bit more stability to it. So that is why I did that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, I'm okay, sorry about that. I was saying we were gonna tilt back to the screen so you can see our next steps that Francis asked me to go over. Um, you can see that my screen says that the embroidery is finished, so I'm going to just clear that. And what Francis asked me now is, how do I save a design? Well, what you can do is you go back to your menu, and I all I did was I went back to the to the embroidery editing screen, and. I don't want to clear anything at this point. I don't want to delete this design. I want to save this design in case I want to use it on something else. And the way I can do that is there's a little file right here. I'm going to hit that file. And you can see another screen save comes up. It says save design at the top. And what I can do is either I can this is for um, the machine. You can hit this one and I can save it to personal designs and it's going to tell me new design. And these are designs that I have already saved in my machine. And these are some birthday cards, some key fobs that I've done. This one is a um, the quilt stippling design that I'm using for the cat blanket, the cat, calico cat quilt, and just some little keychains. So I can either hit OK now and save it to machine, or if you don't want to save all your designs in the machine and um, bog down your memory of your machine, you can hit the USB icon and you can hit that it says devices, so I'm going to hit that. Oh, I forgot it's a long press. Okay, so it brought up my USB stick. You can see that it says here at the top, USB embroidery stick. And then I just hit the check mark for OK. Then you'll have your little hourglass coming up. And it's saving it. And you can see the little progress bar. Okay, file successfully saved. So now what I can do is I can hit my delete, delete all designs, yes. So my screen is blank. So now I can go to my file screen. Um, it is on font. I can go to my file. So these are the designs I have saved into personal files. I want to make sure that it's saved to USB hit my USB, and there is my saved design right there. Okay, um, I, I hope that I accomplished what you needed, Francis, and um, if you have any more questions, please comment down below, or, of course, now you can email me if you wish, and again, my email, jsnc18 at gmail.com. Um, if any of you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. That lets me know you appreciate the videos. Give that video a thumbs up because that really does encourage me as well that you did like the video. Um, if you have any suggestions, comment down below or again, you can email me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, so this concludes this video and I hope you all have a wonderful evening and we will see you all in the next video. I will be getting back to the key fobs and the lanyards. Um, 
requested videos always take precedence over um, anything else that I have planned. So um, we'll be getting back to that now. So we will see you all soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.